Good morning. Today is Thursday, March 31st, 2022. The underlying theme of our Torah portion this Shabbos, the Parsha Tazriya, we've mentioned it in a different context earlier this week, is this condition of tsara'as, wrongly translated as leprosy, but it is a physical condition that comes from a spiritual source, misdeed, our sages tell us, from Lashon Hara, from speaking negatively about others. If there is such a thing as Lashon Hara, negative speech, bad speech, then Rabbi Jonathan Sachs points out there must also be Lashon Hatov, good speech, positive speech. Now, the way to avoid Lashon Hara, speaking negatively about others, is to practice silence. That's the best way to do it. And our sages are eloquent about the importance of silence, the benefit of silence. I realize that I am violating that as this moment as I am speaking to you, but at other times, Silence is a very, very important virtue in lots of different ways. But silence usually does not create anything positive. So we need to understand if there is Lashon Hara, what is Lashon Hatov? What is positive speech, good speech? And one element of this is something that is extremely important. It's something that we can put into practice every day, and that is focused praise. Focused praise. And we have a classic source that describes this to us and holds it out as a model for what we should try to practice if we are going to work on this subject of Lashon Hatov, positive speech, good speech. And the passage is a Mishnah in Pirkei Avos. The Pirkei Avos teaches us the following teaching from one of our greatest rabbis, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. The Mishnah tells us Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai had five prime students, five beloved students that he taught and he mentored and cared deeply about and came to know intimately. And the Mishnah tells us, He would describe the specific talent of each one of them. He would say about one student, Eliezer ben Hyrcanus. He would say that Eliezer is like a plastered well that never loses a drop. He would say about his, his student, Yehoshua. Yehoshua, praised is the mother that gave birth to him. He would say about Yossi, his son, his, his, Yossi, his student, who was a Kohen. He would say, He's a chassid, a pious man. He would say about his student Shimon, this is one who fears sin. And then about his student Elazar, he would say, he is like an ever-flowing spring. Now, from this Mishnah, we learn about these five individual scholars, the importance of the characteristics that each one of them had, but we learned something much deeper. The Mishnah is teaching us how to create future leaders because it's not so difficult to create followers. Many people develop a large following Just look at what happens on social media. But how do you transform creating followers to 
enabling them to become creative leaders in their own right. It's much harder to create leaders than it is to create followers. And the greatness of Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai as a teacher and the deeper reason for the Mishnah teaching us this lesson is not just to learn about the qualities of his five students. It's to teach us how he managed to do that through focused praise. He showed, he demonstrated to each of his students what was their particular strength, what was their particular gift. Eliezer was one with a superb memory. If he learned something once, he never forgot it. Shimon was one who may not have had the intellectual brilliance of the others, but he had a reverent nature that reminded others that they were not just scholars, but they were supposed to be holy men engaged in coming closer to God through their study. Elazar had a creative mind constantly coming up with new interpretations and new insights. Now, the fact is that this activity of focus praise is not only a way of developing leaders, because remember, each one of these five students went on to become the greatest leaders of their generation. But this type of focus praise also has a deep spiritual message because religion is about faith in God. But here's the deeper truth. Faith in God should also lead us to have faith in people because if every one of us is created in God's image, then we have to be able to learn, to discern, to see God's image reflected in everyone. And this is behind the phrase that is repeated in the very beginning of the Torah, in Bereshis, where God is in the midst of creating the universe, everything in the world, and at each point, God says, Vayar ki tov, and God saw that it was good. Now, God is characterizing for us the nature of what it was that God created. Yes, but God is doing something much deeper. God is modeling for us the way that we should look for what is good in others. And by looking for what is good in others, we actually help to strengthen that goodness. We actually help to bring that goodness to life where maybe before it was only there in potential. But God teaches us through his actions, through his words, that we have the ability through our focused praise of others to bring about their greatness, to bring about their strength. So here's an incredible story. It's told by a teacher in Israel, Avinoam Hirsch. And the story goes like this. This teacher, Avinoam, had a practice, which many, many teachers have, that he would give out a certificate of excellence to one student a week. Student of the week had showed particular excellence in class that week. And what he would do is, each week, he would send a notification 
to the parents of the teacher, of the student, telling them that their child was about to be awarded with this honor this week. And then at the end of the week, he would present a certificate to the child that they would be able to take home and be proud of. Okay, many teachers do something similar to this. One week, he was chose the student who was going to get their certificate. But by mistake, he sent the notification to the wrong parent. And in this case, it was a single mother. He sent the notification to this mother. You know, you click on the email by mistake. He sent it to her by mistake. Now, by the time he realized the mistake, he had already received an email back from this mother. And this mother said, you don't know what you have done for me. You don't know what your message has meant to me. Today is the happiest thing that has happened to me in a very, very long time. And I am so proud of my son. And I'm so happy that this week he's going to receive this certificate of excellence. The only problem is the teacher realized that this student is going to come home and his mother is going to expect him to have this certificate of excellence because she already knows about it. But the problem was that this student to whom he mistakenly sent the notification to the mother was not only not the student that he had intended to award that week, he was actually one of the weakest students in the class. And in fact, that day, he had had to send this student to the principal because he was disruptive in class, which was a frequent occurrence. So what's he going to do? This student clearly does not deserve this certificate, even though the mother already knows that he's going to receive it. So here's what he did. That day, after class, he called this student over to him. He explained what happened. You recognize that you are not the most excellent student in class this week or any other week. We both know that. But I sent this message to your mother. So I'm going to do something that I have never done before. He says to this student, I am, give, I am going to give you a certificate of excellence, but it is a loan. I'm not giving it to you. I'm lending it to you. You don't deserve it. But I believe that your behavior in the next week could deserve it. So, your mother expects it. I'm sending it home with you, but it's only a loan dependent on how you act in class next week. When this boy heard that his mother had received this notification, that he was going to receive the Certificate of Excellence for his work that week, this boy's eyes started to tear up. And he said, you don't understand what you've done for me. He says, just last night, my mother was crying because she had talked to my other teacher and the other teacher had told her the problems and what's happening. And she was so upset. And you caused my mother to have this joy that now she thinks her student is the best one in your class this week. And she has so many difficulties in life. She's a single mother. She's dealing with financial problems. And the brightest moment in 
a long, long time. Is she got a message that I'm doing so well in your class? I promise you that I'm going to live up to it. I promise you that you're going to see that next week I'm going to deserve that certificate. And throughout the next week, this student who had been the worst in the class, causing the most problems in the class, turned into an angel. And the school psychologist came over to me, this teacher says, and asked, did you suggest to the mother that she should start the child on medication, maybe Ritalin because he has so many problems in school and all of a sudden he's so turned around and he's acting so well. And this teacher, Avi Hirsch, said to the psychologist, he said, no, he's on much stronger stuff than just medicine pills that he takes. He's on praise. The right kind of praise changes lives. That's the power of Lashon Hatov. Bad speech diminishes us. Good speech can transform our lives and lift us to the greatest heights. My friends, I want to wish you a great day. And I look forward to seeing all of you soon in person.